Machine. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Welcome to my podcast, Cold Narratives. I'm your host, Iceberg Green. About to let y'all hear some of these cold narratives. Check it out. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? So, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the internet with, um, you know, these gender wars and how our people have uh, pre- basically been separated through social media, kind of like status, you know, it's kind of like the thing. Nowadays, it's no longer any substance, you know, anything tangible going on. It's just status. And when you rely on that, um, you're relying on what that person has. Um, you know, you're not relying on that individual um, as a person. It's just status. So it just takes the hum- humanity out of it, just period. Um, and that's just not the way um, it should be, but it is. And I'm going to reflect on that today, you guys, because... Um, I don't think it applies to everyone. I think that's just like a group that they put in there and try to um, degrade us and put us down. Because, you know, it's a whole different flip side of all that stuff you see on propaganda. The hardworking class people that continue to work, continue to strive. Um, and you don't see this. You know, um, what you see on television, what you see on a, in the media, um, it's all for show, man. It's, it's pretty much to put on. And I'm not here for that, man. I'm here to, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I focus on is geared toward just giving y'all an understanding, you know, and changing the narrative, you know, um, and not in a bad way. Um, If you take this personal, um, hey, that's because you got a lot of personal issues. (laughs) I'm just saying. So um, I was watching some, uh, I was watching Tariq Nashi, matter of fact, and um, he was talking about the culture. He was talking about how... um, women uh do not respect uh men in power particularly black men in power um and i was thinking about that i was like man that's actually true because um i'm a black business owner and i noticed the people that are the most standoffish with me are are the women you know um when they see me in a position of power because i can basically say you know i don't want to do business with you and women nowadays are so used to being in control of a lot of different situations and that's okay that's fine um, but when they finally meet a man that's actually in control of his own situation, it scares them because, uh, I just, it's just my opinion. I don't think they, uh, you know, they respect that for one. Um, and two is like, Whoa, uh, he has a lot of power. He can actually say some stuff and it has substance to it. He's, he's going to speak his mind and speak clearly about how he feels about me and my behavior, uh, whatever issues I may have, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, the average dude just not tripping off that. He don't care what, you know, she brings to the table because for him, it's about status too. He's not looking for tangible. So, you know, when they group these people, they belong together. Um, what they need to talk about more is, um, the working class, the people that's at home teaching their kids the right way to go about life. Um, black families, you know, we have a, a lot of stigma attached to us, but I, I'm, you know, me in particular, I focus on helping a young black man in my community. I provide a space, you know, I'm about to get into a lot of um, community service work um, where I help the youth um, pretty much make decisions and better choices because I think that plays a big part. Um, You know, if you can catch them before they make that bad decision, you can kind of shift things in a different direction, you know, and I'm just thinking solutions. I don't have them all, but I have a few and I'm a focus on those. But um, I digress. Yeah, so it's a lot of stuff. I even see it in my community. A lot of these women now, they're uh, attracted to themselves. You know, you see all these only fads, you see all this stuff, and they done got full of themselves. And you can't tell them nothing, you know. And like I said, that's okay for them. Um, but I don't want the, I don't want the uh, world and I don't want society to be focusing on us as a people as being ratchet, as being so outgoing that it's negative. Uh, we're a very outgoing people, but um, not in a negative way, you know. And I'm, I'm sure in the history books, if you go back, it'll tell you that. And they're trying to rewrite history based on uh, what they got going on in society. And this is pretty much what's going to be part of our history now. But it goes deeper than this. We were not <laughs> a people who just went around everywhere twerking and dudes that just went around with their pants hanging and just being so uh, rude Um we didn't live in that. You know, now it's pretty much the norm to be rude, obnoxious, uh, have no integrity, uh, no humility. Um, it's kind of the norm now. If you focus in on doing things the right way, you meet somebody like, hey, man, I got the right way to do it. Uh, they're going to figure out 
uh, an easier way. You know, it's like, oh, I can do it this way, but, you know, it's, I'm going to cut a few corners. And that's the problem. Everyone, you know, um, I feel like even the women, they're cutting corners. That's why you got these things on social media where they're able to gas themselves up. Like the OnlyFans, like the Instagram likes, like uh, these influencers. And all they're doing is influencing you with their body. That's not with their mind. So the influence is coming from what you see on status. Why? It's not coming from their mind. You're not influenced by that because you don't even know them. You just know uh, something that you see on the social media. And for me, man, that's that's just like, man, that's too much. It's just too much. And we need to get back to the roots of knowing each other, knowing what we think in our thought process, and, you know, find some positive in our heads to focus on. Because we already got enough negative going on. And this is just to my people who need a better sense of direction. You know, I understand we do what we do. Every group does. It's not just black people, but they're going to publicize us. So we have to be extra careful with what we do and how we do it around um, certain different groups and uh, ethnicity, uh, excuse me, ethnicities, because they're ready to target us. They're ready to um, pretty much put a paint on a wall, you know, and they're painting it themselves. So, and, uh, wait, let me, let me explain. The, the media is painting that, you know, um, to these people and without even knowing us as a, a culture, um, you know, cause me in particular, I'm proud to be black. I love being black. I, I love waking up in my skin and despite what people say, I keep my head held high because I have these different conversations all the time about our culture and people always seem to have that solution. Um, and most of them are created in the problem. So, you know, for me, that's just like, you know, they, they just want to have that conversation with someone black so they can try to break us down and, and uh, bug break us, you know, but that ain't happening, man. Um, and I talked to a few uh, different groups about this um, because I kind of try to see what they feel about us from a, uh, I guess a personal level. Cause when you see on TV, you know, I actually talk to them like, how do y'all actually feel about black people? And you know, the response is a lot of them actually do like us. Um, it's just what they see on TV, it scares them. Um, and you know, for me, you know, I, I see a lot of stuff from other groups that scares me as well. But us as black people, we still give them a chance. You know, it's a lot of destructive stuff going on in this world from that government um, to the, you know, just in the community, all these mayors and all that, they just taking money. You know how much the mayors get paid? Just, you know, to, to flip the script, they get paid at least $230,000 a year. So look that up and think about your community and what that, you know, is doing. They're, they're getting paid a lot to do a little. Um, that's, you know, let me get back to it. That was just, you know, some, that's a whole another topic for another day. Um, but back to the culture situation. Um, and I see this on the internet. Everybody seems to have the answer for, what it is with black people, foundational black marriage, they got the answer. Everybody seems to have an answer um, to what they call our problem. And you got to think about it. They they say that, you know, black men are not uh, standing up for a lot of these sisters. These sisters are intimidating. Um, some of them, not all of them. So it's kind of hard to stand up for them. And, you know, because they pretty much, they independent. They want to stand up for themselves. And that's what, you know, society put forth. So us as black men, we got to stand on our square, you know. Um, and I'm talking about when it comes to, you know, meeting someone and they're, you know, they have uh, this independence about themselves. And they pretty much want you to follow their lead. But being an alpha, being, you know, a uh, black man in society, you, you know, that really handles his business, that um, wakes up every day to do better, you know, because every day you wake up is a chance to do better. I forgot who said that quote. Um, but yeah, that's just where we at. And y'all don't pay attention to what you see on media about um, foundational black Americans, about people, um, my complexion, people black Americans. Um, we're very um, gracious people, humble people. You just think about all the stuff we've been through in society. We're very humble. Um, despite you may see a few people um, lashing out because that's just part of life. Some people can't take it anymore, what this government is doing to us. You know, we've tried to go Democrat, and they're the main ones bashing us. They're the main ones putting us down. You know, Republicans, they do their thing. Even conservatives, liberals, even independents. I don't, you know, it's kind of hard to be um, any of those groups when, um, of political parties, when they're, the, they're just talking about you bad. They put you down. I've never, oh, I don't see any, um, campaigns where they're uplifting black people just think about these campaigns you see them running there's no motivation for black people it's all for this community that community 
and you don't get any motivation from them. So, you know, our votes and all this stuff is being um, put to the test now, you know, so what you going to do with it? You know, are you going to deal with the people that steady putting us down, degrading us and putting uh, media out there to make us look bad? Um, are you going to think about this, you know, and actually seek out someone that's going to um, help you? And I'm not just talking about in the government. I'm talking about in your city um, because I've been really on it in Oakland, California, man. And these mayors, man, they something else, man. They get in here and they got all just like in the government. They got lobbyists and people that fund and get them ready for office. As soon as they get in office, they focusing on them, not the community. And we come last, you know, in, in every city, every state. Uh, the, the black community comes last. We are not a priority. Um, and it's facts. You can see it. You know, I'm sure you see it on TV when they talk about all these different um, laws and things that they're going to change, you know, and they're trying to do it now. They're trying to rush do that. They're trying to do a rush job on all these policies and laws because they want us to get, you know, angry, upset. Like the affirmative action issue. I, I was not upset at all. I remember that back in the day when they started that and you know i was like that definitely didn't apply to us at the time because we was already having a hard time and we still do um we work hard for us so we don't need no affirmative action we just got we just need action and that's what we about so they try to get you know us and other word about that and that you know like a lot of this stuff man it's just try to use us as uh tools you know tools for the media to say hey this is what black people need this is what they've been through you've been through just as much as them Go ahead and fight. And you can't compare the struggle of black people with any other uh, ethnicity, any other group, any other uh, political party. You cannot compare foundational black American struggle to none of that. Um, and that's just a fact, man. And if you're trying to do that, that means you're trying to downplay what happened. And you know what that means. You don't care. You're racist or something of that nature. Could be white supremacists. Uh, white supremacists, they all exist. Don't think they don't, racism exists. Don't let people tell you it don't exist no more. It exists. And if you're black like me, you see it more so than any other race. I see it a lot. And, um, you know, I, you know, I just, I had to throw a lot of that in there, man. And I got a few more, uh, subjects I'm going to talk about, but this is just my son Sunday address. You know, I decided to do it this way so y'all can get a better understanding. Y'all can look me in my face and see how serious I am about helping my people. It's not about putting us down, you know. Um, you don't see any other groups putting their people down. And their people be down, straight up. And they don't do it, you know. So us as a people, I think we, you know, I know that we need to stop bashing each other and, you know, take better care of ourselves. You know, that's just the best way to put it. I'm not going to sit and judge nobody. But I just, what I will say is, me included, we all need to take better care of ourselves. And like they say, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And that's a lot of stuff that's going on is how we're doing it. You know, um, like I said, man, a lot of stuff needs to remain personal in your personal life, not in society, man. So uh, y'all have a good day, Iceberg Green. Uh, see y'all next Monday, next Sunday. Well, excuse me. Y'all take care, man. I'm out of here. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I also want to say God bless those going through the struggle. And make sure you watch out for them cold narratives that the government trying to push on us, y'all. And to all my black people, I will be nothing without y'all. God bless you all.